So Dr. Corey, you talked some about how we can empower youth and how we can um, kind of overcome these stereotypes that we have of youth and the divisions that we have between generations. And I'm wondering what a church can specifically do to overcome some of those generational divides within the congregation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first big thing is stop having separate youth worship. I mean, there is a time and a place for young people to have their own time for formation and for, um, you know, for praying together. And not, I'm not saying never have them be separate, but if they're leaving your sanctuary to go someplace else where the, where the rest of the congregation is worshiping, then they are never going to learn what it means to be part of, of a full intergenerational congregation. So just don't have a competing um, youth thing at the same time you have regular worship. But then the next thing is every youth pastor I know struggles to find adult volunteers willing to help them do their programming or willing to, to chaperone a trip. Um, and mostly it's because uh, adults will say, oh, I don't know anything about youth. I can't do that, right? And um, that, again, is part of this legacy of the stereotypes that youth are somehow so different from us and so scary and that they're going to judge us or something about teenagers uh, worries us because it's going to remind us of our own time as adolescents, which wasn't necessarily a happy time. So people always shy away from that. But I think there are creative ways that you can help youth. You, If you can be that chaperone, that is fantastic. And you should you should know that you don't have to do anything great. You just have to physically be there and care. That in itself opens up huge when, you know, doors for conversation. Uh, just show up and sit down right next to them and talk to them like they're actual real human beings who aren't different from you. That would be one. But even if that's not something that you're able to do for whatever reason, Pick a young person in your church and ask them something about their lives or ask the youth pastor and then pray for them. Pray specifically. Johnny's on the football team and has an important game on Friday. Pray for Johnny and for his football team and then let him know you're praying for him. This is so important that they actually know there are people in the congregation praying for them and who know maybe just one thing about them that they could ask them, you know, when you're having lemonade after the worship service. Just know something about them. Um, I would love it if pastors would preach sermons that include linkages that help connect to the adolescent experience or to the experience of young people so that we're not always using connections that only make sense for uh, heterosexual married people who have small children um, or connect to only sports lovers or to uh, whatever it is that our sermon illustrations usually try to connect to. Like just try to start thinking about Young people are no different from older folks about the main universal things we're struggling with. Loneliness, fear, anger, uh, you know, a sense of a, a need for vocation, a need for love. They manifest that possibly differently in their lives, but they're universal things that we need, which is why Jesus' message is universal and touches us. But just try to help to make that link. not in the sermon you give to the young people when they're separate from you, but in the presence of the entire assembly. So the entire assembly is thinking about what does alienation feel like when you're a teenager? What does a need for love feel like when you are a teenager? So that, you know, we, we have children's moments. In my congregation, we have all these small children. They come to the front. The pastors work with them, getting them to think um, about whatever the larger sermon message is, right? So the entire assembly is bearing witness to the children's formation. Why don't we do anything where we're bearing witness to the young people's formation in the midst of the assembly? Try to come up with creative ways in which we don't put the young people out of the assembly for their formation, but keep them within our communion of saints for that formation.